The Bamboo Lab X1C is a fantastic bit of kit, and when compared to many other 3D printers, is a self-sustaining workhorse who wants for very little maintenance. But like any machine with many moving parts, eventually some of them will wear out and need replacing. One of the parts like that for the X1C is the filament sensor, and today we're going to look at how to replace it. So, let's take a look. If you just want to get stuck straight into the tutorial, I add chapters to pretty much all my videos so you can easily jump ahead if you're in a hurry by taking a look at the video playback bar or having a look at the chapter list at the bottom of the video description. If when you're starting prints or during mid-print filament changes you're experiencing fail to load errors, especially when it's loading the filament all the way into the printer extruder, then experiencing an issue and unloading it all the way again, and then repeating that several times, it can halt your print schedule dead in its tracks. There are a number of potential causes of this issue. One of the more common ones is a clog in the extruder. Now this isn't the same thing as a clogged nozzle. This is most commonly where a piece of filament breaks off inside the extruder and then can jam up the gears. I'll be covering this in another tutorial very soon. If you're not watching this soon after release, it might already be in my video list, so go check it out. And if it's not there, hit subscribe so you don't miss it when it does come out soon. Another potential cause of this issue is an issue with the filament sensor. The filament sensor is literally a component which detects if there is filament present in the extruder carriage. If you find that this issue is particularly intermittent, even if it is caused by the filament sensor, it doesn't necessarily mean that the filament sensor is broken and needs replacing. The sensor features a magnet on a lever which is then pushed aside as filament enters the extruder. If you regularly print with materials such as Prusament Galaxy or Bamboo Lab Sparkle, tiny metallic flecks which give these filaments their speckled shine can get attracted to the magnet in the sensor. When I found that mine was absolutely caked in these black and silver sparkles, I immediately grabbed a non-metallic soft bristle brush to try and clean it off, but frustratingly didn't get any shots of it before doing so. This is that sensor after having cleaned off as much as I could, and it's still not looking pristine. Despite having cleaned off the sensor as best I could, it's still causing these fail to load errors, though granted a lot less frequently. Even so, it's now time to replace the filament sensor with a new one, so let's get stuck in. First, ensure that no filament is loaded into the extruder, which is unlikely if you've been getting these fail to load errors. Cool down your nozzle and then power down your printer. Open the front of the extruder housing by just pulling it towards you. It's just held on by magnets, but it will still be connected by the fan cable. Then gently rest it over the x-axis rails, being careful not to scratch it. Next, remove the PTFE tube from the top of the extruder by pressing down on the bracket with a tool and gently pulling up on the tube. Take an H1.5 hex key and loosen the screw on the side of the cutter lever. Keep unscrewing until the arm hangs all the way down. Disconnect the thermistor, heat element and fan cables that all lead to the hot end. As always, make sure that you're removing these using the white plastic connectors, not by pulling the wires themselves. You don't need to actually remove the hot end, but you'll want these cables out of the way. Next, you want to disconnect the filament sensor connector, which is this one here, likely attached by a blob of silicon glue. I removed mine already when I was initially investigating this, which is why there isn't any glue on mine now. But if I have some archive, I'll pop a shot of it here. If yours does have glue on it, which likely it will if you've not done this before, don't just try to remove the connector with the glue still on, as this could remove the port or the board. First, you want to remove the glue before removing the connector. You can do what I did and very carefully peel the glue off, making sure that it's not pulling at any parts of the plastic port or causing any potential damage. If, however, yours is being too stubborn to do this, then you can use a heat gun on a low setting or a hairdryer on a low setting and just use it for a few seconds to warm up and soften up the glue and then try peeling it off again. Once the connector is free of glue, you can unplug it and carefully remove any excess glue from the port or connector. Using the H1.5 hex key again, remove these two screws located at the top left of the extruder carriage. Using the hex key, press down on the pneumatic PTFE connector again to free it from the top bracket, then carefully slide it left out of the carriage. Let's take a quick look at the simple kit you get with the replacement sensor. You get the replacement sensor itself, you get the two fitting screws, and you get a small tube of silicon glue. Now let's get this fitted back into the printer, which is pretty much what we've just done, but in reverse. 
Start off by sliding the new sensor back in place, pressing down on the pneumatic connector with your finger so it slides under the top bracket, then secure it in place with the two screws. You can absolutely use the two screws that you originally removed, but you may as well use the two new ones that came with the sensor to ensure that it's a nice fit. Plug in the filament sensor cable, and once you're confident it's in place, use a little bit of silicon glue to hold it in there. It can be useful to have something to hand to help you spread it, especially if you're using the tube that comes with it as it doesn't have a fine tip nozzle. I find just a short off cut of some filament works great. You don't need to go too heavy on the glue, just make sure that there's enough covering both the plug and the port, and try to avoid getting it on the main circuit board or other plugs. If you do manage to get it on the circuit board a bit, don't worry too much as it's non-conductive and shouldn't short it out. You'll want to give this glue a bit of time to dry before continuing so it doesn't make a mess. Ideally half an hour, but whatever time you can spare. This gives you the perfect opportunity to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future 3D printing and maker tech tutorials and deep dives, and maybe consider joining and becoming a channel member to support me and get yourself some bonus goodies. Once you're happy it's touch dry, plug the three hot end cables back in. Next we want to refit the cutter arm. Before you do, this can be a good opportunity to have a quick glance at the blade and see if that needs replacing. Once you're happy, lift the cutter arm back into place, making sure that the blade slots into the cutter slot correctly. Once the arm is all the way back up, tighten the screw all the way back in again. Now reinsert the PTFE tube by just pushing it into the hole at the top. You should feel a little resistance, then it should push all the way in and be held in place. Finally, refit the front housing by just lining it up and it will magnetically pull together. So that's the new filament sensor fitted. As a quick test to see if loading is now working, you can just load and then unload an external spool of filament. But if the issue was intermittent anyway, ultimately time will tell. Because none of what we've just done has affected the nozzle size or relative position or anything like that, you shouldn't need to do a full recalibration, but it also can't hurt. So if you wanted to and you've got the time, you can do so using the on-screen instructions. I really hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please do hit the like button, and again, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss my future 3D printing and maker tech tutorials and deep dives. Thanks very much everyone, and until next time, happy printing. Thanks for watching, and a huge thank you to my channel members for all your support. Don't forget, you can join them by hitting join below my videos. For now, why not check out one of my other videos to learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much everyone, and until next time, happy printing.